Hey everyone, it's Pam, and today I'm doing another collection video. This time I will be talking about the original Xbox and the Xbox 360. So originally this video was just going to be about the 360, which is the console that Will and I own the most games for, but I only own nine original Xbox games, so I figured I may as well stick them in with the 360 because they really weren't enough to make a video on their own. So the original Xbox is not a console I played a ton of um, back when it came out. I believe it came out in 2001. Um, there was just a few games that I played sort of on my own at home, and then there was a number of games that I played um, as part of my job. I worked as QA for a game publishing company, so that's what actually a majority of my collection here makes up. But yeah, in the sixth generation, I was really more of a PS2 girl than an original Xbox girl, but I will just go over the few games that I have for this system. So first up is Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. It seems like games are always trying to bring the works of Lovecraft to life, um, especially recently. There's been sort of a rash of games based on Lovecraft's works. This one, uh, it starts out really good. It actually has a really effective first hour or so. Um, the story is kind of delightfully bonkers, and I really liked how they handled the sanity mechanic um, when you started seeing too many inexplicable things, uh, your vision would get all blurry and you start stumbling around and that was kind of neat. But unfortunately, as the game goes on, it turns into basically just like sort of an action shooter game, which uh, just, it just doesn't live up to the beginning of the game. So I've never actually finished this one. It just it just declines in quality very quickly, but I it is one of the few games that I played on the original Xbox, so I wanted to have it. And I'm hoping actually that it will become one of the backwards compatible titles on the Xbox One at some point. So this is a game that I haven't played yet, the only one of the Xbox collection I haven't played. It's Fusion Frenzy, which is a party game. I believe you can play with up to four players, and this is one of the backwards compatible ones, so you can actually play this on Xbox One as well. It looks like a lot of fun, um, I just don't ever have any friends around to play video games with, but I would like to give this a try at some point. You know I love me some Bioware, so this is Jade Empire. This is one that I didn't play until, I don't know, maybe like three or four years ago. It was one of the few Bioware RPGs I hadn't played. So I picked this up and played through it, and it's very similar to Knights of the Old Republic in sort of the gameplay style. Um, it's good, it's sort of a big epic storyline, lots of great characters to get to know, and I really like the cover. I love when they do this sort of shiny box art. So this is one of the games I did QA on. It is Land of the Dead, Road to Fiddler's Green. It is based on the movie Land of the Dead by uh, George A. Romero. Groove is where I worked. And so the company I worked for published budget titles. Like there was no triple A, like fantastic looking. They're all, you know, a little bit janky, not very graphically impressive even for the Xbox day and age. But overall, I we I played a lot of not great games while I worked there. And this one was okay. It had a single player campaign that was, you know, it was fine. I didn't dislike playing it even though I ended up playing it a lot over the time I spent there, but it's, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend you run out and buy it, but I didn't hate working on it. So when I first started working at Groove, uh, one of the first games I ever played was Pariah, and this was actually already out before I started working there. 
So I'm not really sure why I was still testing it after it was released, I guess for patches and things. But this is basically a, um, a Halo knockoff. It seems a little higher budget, like a little more production quality, but it's, it's not a fantastic game. The story eventually kind of dissolves and doesn't make sense by the end of things, so. So Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, I think this is the first game I ever played on Xbox and probably the reason that I had an Xbox in the first place. I thought this was a fantastic game. I've always been a big fan of Star Wars. And um, after playing this and playing Mass Effect, you can see the seeds of Mass Effect in here. Like, without a KOTOR, I don't know that Mass Effect ever would have been a thing. So I am very grateful to this game for, you know, the eventually eventual path that Bioware would go on with their very character-focused RPGs. And yeah, this was just a lot of fun. I, I always wanted to go through again and play as a dark side Jedi, mostly because I wanted to kill Karth. I didn't like him very much, but this is fun. Um, and then that brings us to Knights of the Old Republic 2, which is also a great game. This one was by Obsidian who makes fantastic RPGs and it did, it is a little unfinished. Um, I think you can get it on PC with some patches in that sort of complete the game a little more. Like the ending of it is definitely a little rushed, but another very solid game with a really good story. So the last couple are just a couple more games I worked on. This is Warpath, and from what I remember, this basically just took the assets from Pariah and reused them and made it into a multiplayer shooter. So again, kind of a bit of a Halo clone. It, there's three different sort of species you can play as, and you just do team battles like capture the flag and deathmatch, I think. It's been a long time since I've played this. It's not one that I really ever wanted to go back and play after I finished uh, doing QA on it, so yeah. And the last one, this is probably one of my most hated games ever. I guess I just picked up a copy for the collection to torment myself, but this is World War II Combat Iwo Jima, and this was some of the worst testing that I've had to do. Something was happening at the company when this was um, being worked on. Usually we would get a new build of a game every couple days so that we could look for new bugs and do regression testing to see if the bugs that we had previously reported had been fixed. But something was going on and we were getting a new build every few weeks. So we were just testing the same thing over and over and over and it was all we had to test and I was getting so frustrated. At one point I I hated playing the game so much. I went and I did QA on everyone else's bugs and I like fixed all their spelling and grammar mistakes and made a whole lot of friends, I'm sure. But yeah, this is very, very low budget war shooter and, um, and I hate it. <laughs> So now onto the Xbox 360, which could very well be my most played console. Uh, this came out in 2005, meaning that the original Xbox really only had four years before uh, it was replaced, which is such a short life cycle, and that's kind of sad. We, between Will and I, my boyfriend, Will, uh, we have about 175 360 games. It's our biggest collection by far, which means I don't want to talk about every single one of them. That would make this video like six hours long. And also, um, a lot of his games are like racing games or Transformers games or rock band games, and I just don't really have that much to say about them. So I've just picked out sort of my stuff, things I've played before, things things I have picked up with the intention of playing, even if I haven't played them yet. Um, and then at the end of it, I'll just quickly go over everything else. I am going to be going through the selected games alphabetically as usual, which means the first game is Akai Katana, and this is a bullet hell shooter. It's an okay bullet hell shooter. I find with 
modern bullet hell, they're very overwhelming. Um, there's just so much going on in, in, on the screen that it's at times hard to tell what is coming at you that's going to hurt you and what is coming at you that's actually going to help you or give you bonus points. So I find this definitely falls into that and it's just generally a little bit overwhelming. However, it also has unlimited continues, at least in one of the modes, which I like. I probably would not have gotten through it all the way without those unlimited continues. Uh, it's not my favorite shoot 'em up, but I do like the genre a lot, so I'm always willing to try new ones. Next up is Alan Wake, and I love this game. It is one of my favorites. It was in my top 100 list. I sort of traded up to this collector's edition. I originally just had the regular one. Uh, it's just a great little thriller. Very silly at times, but also quite effective and excellent use of music. Alan Wake is a writer. If you don't know the story, he's going looking for his missing wife, and uh, it's a book, which is cute. And it comes with a few things in the collector's edition. So first, we have the actual game discs and the- oh! This is a- sorry, this is a soundtrack and a bonus disc. And then in here, we've got the actual game disc uh, here. And then, what I like is it comes with a little- oops, everything's gonna fall off my lap. It comes with a book, The Alan Wake Files, which just tells sort of the story of the game, some sort of interviews with people and characters. And uh, yeah, really like this game. If you like- I see, I like that it's like a thriller, but it's not too scary, because I'm honestly kind of wimpy. So this is sort of the perfect level of scariness for me in games, and I just think it's really well done. I'm generally a fan of anything that Remedy makes. Next is Alice Madness Returns. This is a game I always used to see the PC big box of in stores, and it always really appealed to me, but I never played it until maybe five or so years ago when it was out on Xbox 360. And I thought this was a great game, very atmospheric. Alice gets these great new dresses and new sort of equipment every time she travels to a new world which has its own aesthetic and it just takes the wonderland setting and just like twists it even more to make it very sort of creepy feeling and it's also just a really good sort of action platformer kind of game i had a lot of fun with it so this is one I haven't played yet, but I bought it with the intention of playing it, it just hasn't happened yet. It's Alpha Protocol, it is an espionage, espionage RPG, and it was made by Obsidian, which is why it interested me. I have heard very good things about it. Um, it's basically all about choice, how you want to approach each situation, whether you want to use stealth or whether you want to fight your way through things or whether you want to use technology. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I will hopefully play it sometime this year though because I do love Obsidian. It also had some of the some great writers that I like. Um, Brian Mitsoda from Bloodlines was one of the writers on here. Chris Avalone was one of the game designers. So I, th I expect that I will really like it. I just need to get some time to play it. Batman Arkham Asylum was, I think, one of the best games from the last generation for me. I had so much fun with this game. Being Batman, hanging off of gargoyle statues and like snatching up thugs and just going around solving puzzles, getting the Riddler trophies and it was just, I don't know, everything about it was good. I loved the exploration. The asylum itself was just like a really cool environment to go through and I loved all the little puzzles and little extras that there were, like the little tape recordings of interviews with people at Arkham, and yeah, this was just really, really great, and sadly, I found this was the height of the series. I did play the next two games, but this one was really the one that appealed to me most. But speaking of it, I do also have Batman Arkham City. This one took the basic formula from Asylum except made it much more open world, which is why I just didn't like it as much. It also sort of took away some of the cooler puzzles that were part of the first game, 
And next up is Bioshock. The whole series, really. This was... I remember watching the commercial for this, and it was so cool. The combination of the visuals and the art deco and the music was just so, so appealing to me. So it was a game that I felt I had to play. It seemed like everyone was playing it at that time. And overall, I think it's really good. I like what they did with the exploration and the tape recordings. I loved how you could like have a weapon in one hand and shoot bees at people through your other hand. So I've also got Bioshock 2, which I actually think is the best of the trilogy, even though it's probably the least talked about, I think. Um, I did talk about this a bit in my top 100. Um, it's got an interesting story with less and Rand, so that's nice. And then Bioshock Infinite. I think this one's a little overrated, but again, I remember the commercial for this and seeing rather than the underground sort of or underwater darkness of Rapture like going out into the blue sky being up among the clouds and just remember how absolutely beautiful the trailer was and there is some cool stuff in here like I like the sort of claw thing that you Oh, what do they call like you repel all down the lines like zip lines kind of and the combat and things are good the story eh. but yeah the bioshock series is fun i think two is best brutal legend is a game i've always wanted to play and just have never quite got around to doing it uh it's a tim schafer game by double fine and i am a fan of a lot of his work this is all about heavy metal. The main character is Jack Black. You see um, Ozzy Osbourne in here. There's a lot of sort of cameos. And I just haven't gotten around to playing it. I've heard ever it starts out really good and then it sort of turns into a strategy game, which a lot of people didn't like. But I feel like I will like that since I do like strategy games. But I just, I just haven't actually turned the game on despite being interested in it since it was announced. So... Uh, another one that I just haven't gotten around to. <laughs> Bullet Storm is a game that is all about stylish kills. You can like kick people into electric fences and cause explosions and there's always just numbers popping up at you uh, sort of scoring each kill you get for how complex and how entertaining it is. It's a very silly game but I did quite enjoy what I played of it. My The only reason I didn't finish it is that I got to a certain point I was a fair ways in like I was probably over halfway but I just got to a certain point and I was like okay, like, I get it. I get what you're doing here. I've appreciated it for a few hours, but I think I've seen enough. It was a gameplay experience that was very entertaining for a few hours, but it wasn't something I wanted to sink too much time into. This is Civilization Revolution. I have been a fan of the Civilization series since Civ 2, and when I saw that they were making a console version, I decided I needed to play it. I did put quite a few hours into this one. Um, it's much simpler than the, you know, mainline PC civil Civilization games, and the games are also much shorter than those, which is probably for the best. Uh, yeah, I've played a number of games on this, um, but haven't haven't really thought about it all that much since then. Okay, I have a problem with Command and Conquer games, and the problem is, I see them, I say, oh, FMV, strategy, real actors who I recognize, I would love this. Um, so I have this habit of buying every Command and Conquer game I see, despite the fact that I have not once actually put one of them into a system and played it. <laughs> this one is obviously for 360, it's got Trish Helfer, it's got Sawyer from Lost, it's got Lando Calrissian, but I haven't played it yet. I don't know. Tell me what is the best Command and Conquer to start with so that I can actually start playing these games rather than just collecting them and having them sit on my shelf. Another fantastic game is Deadly Premonition. I loved this game so much. It's so silly and so charming. It has this horribly dark and disturbing 
story and occurrences during it, but it's also just just very goofy and the the tonal shifts just really work for me somehow. Um, it's very janky, like the combat is not anything to write home about, but it's just, I had such a fun time playing through this game. It's very much like Twin Peaks with just kind of odd, something dark lurking under the surface characters. It's just so funny and so charming. Everyone has their own little schedules in the town, so you have to get people at the right time of day, and you can smoke to pass the time. You have to shave your beard and shower, or else uh, Agent York will get stinky and he'll make less money. It's just so many cool interlocking systems and great characters, and if you haven't played Deadly Premonition, I definitely recommend it. And this is Deadpool, which is an incredibly fun game if you are at all a fan of the Deadpool movies or the comics. Uh, this just really brings him to life in a fun way. It's full of comedy and great set pieces. Things are always sort of changing up, so the gameplay, even though it's fairly simple, never gets stale, and it's quite funny, very juvenile, obviously, but hilarious if that's what you're into. Uh, this is really fun and not too long, which I always like. I'm one of those people who never really get sick of zombie games, and one of my favorite zombie games, actually probably my favorite, is Dead Rising, one of the early Xbox 360 releases. I think this is one of the first games I actually played on the system. This is just so much fun. It's not at all based on or licensed by Romero and his um, Dawn of the Dead, as it actually says right on the cover here, but it takes place in a mall. You play a photojournalist who is um, investigating what seems to be some kind of outbreak, and it ends up being zombies, and you need to track down the story, find out where they came from, stay alive through all of it. And it's just, I love this game so much. It does so many things that just get me in a way. One of my favorite things in games is just giving me a time limit, limit, giving me a lot of things to do, but not enough time to do every single thing. So in Dead Rising, you can go and save survivors, you can fight psychopaths, you can track down the next point of the story, you can dress up in funny clothes and funny hats, uh, you can make new weapons to fight the zombies with, you can just go around running over zombies with the car if that's what you want to do, but there's these points you have to be at at certain parts of the story um, in order to move it forward. And if you miss those, then you basically can't finish the game. So you have to really balance what you choose to do if uh, getting through it and finding out the whole story is what you want. So it's just so much fun. I'm going to back play it now. It's maybe a little janky. It also had a real problem with text size, which I talked about in a video fairly recently. But yes, just one of my favorite games of all time. And of course, I also have Dead Rising 2. It basically takes the same kind of formula, just puts it in a different setting, and gives you a different character to play with. People didn't like the new character, I think his name's Chuck, quite as much, and neither did I, and eventually they re-released Dead Rising 2 with Frank West from the first game um, as the star again, which was pretty cool. But yeah, this one it's sort of like in a Las Vegas kind of area, and you're basically doing the same kind of things, but this time you have a daughter who has been bitten by a zombie and needs medication in order to keep her from turning. So that's sort of the thing that is keeping you on a sort of time track um, as you go through. Dead Space, uh, really, really good, scary game. When it comes to horror, Sci-fi horror is like my sub-genre of choice. I sort of can't get enough of it when it comes to either games or movies. And this is just immensely creepy. 
Um, the setting of it, seeing people brought back to life as these necromorphs who are just terrible and make awful sounds and come after you and can pop out of anywhere. Um, it's just a very sort of thrilling and very scary experience. The weapons are even kind of horrifying to use. Um, you can't just like headshot things to kill them. You have to dismember them, which is gross and makes everything even more intense. Um, yeah, it's just really good. I, I like the story. I love the atmosphere. Just very, very creepy. Also really handles um, the idea of being sort of out in space or somewhere without atmosphere and the sort of silence of that really well, I thought. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite horror games on the system. Um, I did also pick up Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 3, but I have not played either of these yet. This is Death Smiles, which is another shoot 'em up. Uh, it's actually a pretty good one. I like it. The sort of unique thing about it is that enemies can approach you from either side. Oh, it's a it's a horizontal shoot 'em up, not vertical. Um, enemies can approach from either side, and your character can actually turn around and shoot behind them, which is something that's fairly unique for this genre. Usually, it's just shooting straight ahead. Um, it's very very colorful. The whole thing definitely has some. Halloween vibes. The characters that you play, I don't know, are a little bit witchy. They're also scantily clad teenagers, so... Hmm. But the game is pretty fun, very colorful, and very cute sprites and enemies and animations. I love the Dragon Age series, so I have the Steelbook Collector's Edition of Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age is a great series of RPGs. Again, love Bioware and what they do and the characters that they create. The collector's item that comes in with this one, other than a bonus disc, is a cloth map of Ferelden, which is neat. I always love when maps are included as the physical items with games. I played Dragon Age Origins a ton. I probably have played it like four or five different times as different characters. I remember my first time through, I was heartbroken because I was an elf and I was in love with Alistair, but because I was an elf and not a human, I couldn't be his queen and I was sad. So I played again as a human um, and I've played more since. It's a really fun one, just really great characters who I came to love. And of course, my favorite Dragon Age and the best Dragon Age, Dragon Age 2. This is the signature edition, though I'm not exactly sure what is signature about it other than the shiny dragon on the cover. Again, this has fantastic characters, and what I really like about it and what it makes it my favorite from the series was its focus on a place. It didn't seem like it was all about your character, Hawk. It seemed like it was all about a city and what went on there and how it changed throughout the years. Um, I love that your companions all have their own homes and their own lives. Again, it doesn't revolve entirely around Hawk. So you can see what they're doing through the years as well and how they're growing and who else they're meeting. And I just really love this game. Um, it did, you know, reuse some environments, which I would have preferred they didn't, but it also definitely didn't take away anything from the overall story and character of the game. So yeah, Dragon Age 2. This is DuckTales Remastered, which is actually a game I first played on PS3, not Xbox, but this is the version I have now. I actually really liked the remastered version of this. The art is very cute. I found the gameplay very sort of easy to pick up and play and engaging. Um, I talk a lot about DuckTales in a video about the DuckTales NES game. Uh, yeah, just a lot of fun and very cute. This is Enslaved Odyssey to the West, which is by Ninja Theory, who has been making a lot of critically acclaimed games recently. This was a really neat one. Um, 
it's a little bit janky at times, like there are certain scenes in it that are a little bit rage inducing, but overall it was a beautiful game. It's sort of in this post-apocalyptic scenario where everything has been taken over by greenery and the way the character, you're this character monkey, uh, the way he moves is really neat and you work with Trip, who has um, enslaved you, which is kind of bad, but you work with her to sort of get to where you're going and you can set turrets and traps to like fight off the things around you and yeah I found it very um, unique and interesting to play um, despite the sort of frustrating bits um, it was it was a cool game so this is fable 2 and for some reason they've made this cover that I hate is sort of reversible and the spine doesn't look like any of the other Xbox 360 games and it drives me nuts. I'm pretty sure I played through all of Fable 2 and I cannot remember anything about it. And that's probably because I played a lot more of Fable 3. Uh, this was a fun game for the most part. I occasionally found it a little, I don't know, sort of trite, the relationships that you sort of have with people and, you know, the conversations being just like making funny faces at people felt a little, a little shallow at times, but it was really fun to play. There was lots of cool quests. Although I remember this game, I don't know if I would just missed it or if it wasn't clear enough, but I passed the point of no return in the game and I, that wasn't made clear to me when I did it. So when I got to a point and it was like, okay, that's it. It's time for the last battle. And I was like, no, I, I'm not done. I have so many other things to do and quests I want to see. Um, but there was only one save and I, there was no way to go back. So I actually ended up quitting the game entirely. And it wasn't for a few years that I went back and I played through and I actually finished the game because I was so mad that I couldn't do the side content I wanted to do. No one let me back to do that. So that's sort of one of my gaming pet peeves when I can um, get to that point and I don't feel it's clear enough that I can uh, not go back after it. So yes, sort of a love-hate relationship. I really liked it and then it did that to me and I was very upset. This is Fallout 3. I was a big fan of the original Fallout and Fallout 2, the computer role-playing games, so I was excited but also a little wary when they announced Fallout 3 and how it would be a sort of first-person, or I guess first or third-person, open-world RPG and just really changing up the structure of it. When it came out, I did quite like it. I liked the exploration. I liked seeing all the skeletons around the wasteland, seeing how people had died, uh, delving into the vaults and finding all the computer entries and things about what had happened. Uh, I did have a lot of fun with it. I find these games don't really hold up that well anymore though. Fun when I first played it, which also applies to this one, Fallout New Vegas, which was probably even more fun, had an even better story. Um, I think Obsidian did a lot. Yeah, Obsidian did a lot of the writing, so I felt like the writing was better in this game, and people talk about this one being the best one, which I sort of agreed with. But then I went back to play it just last year, and I just find the whole formula of the new fallouts now hard to tolerate the combat isn't that good the world eventually stops being less fun to explore the conversations just start getting long so i i didn't play too much of this when i tried to go back i feel like i'm sort of over the fallout bethesda formula which also explains why i really didn't like Outer Worlds very much. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed these originally. I just don't find they're that appealing to me anymore. All right, now on to one of the only Rockstar games I've ever really been interested in. It is L.A. Noir, a 40s detective game set in Los Angeles. I really liked this one. Um, they did a lot 
which doesn't particularly stand up now with like facial expressions and learning to tell when people are lying. There's so many memes about that uh, that sort of go around from time to time. But I liked the gameplay of this a lot. I liked how much there was a focus on interrogations and dialogue. The action scenes were not that great to me, but I just really liked the feel of sort of driving around 40s Los Angeles. It felt very authentic. Not that I was there in, for, in the 40s in Los Angeles, but just from like other movies and things I like. Like I love um, LA Confidential. That's one of my favorite movies. And the game really reminded me a lot of that. So um, I had a good time with this, just sort of driving around, exploring the city. And I thought, even though the story eventually took a turn I wasn't particularly fond of, um, I did just have a really good time with this one. We also have Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. Both games I have mostly played co-op, either on console or sometimes on PC. If you were to ask me what the difference between 1 and 2 was, I actually couldn't tell you. I don't really remember which one I've played more of. It's mostly just been a fun party game. I remember playing with a friend who didn't really play video games much and looking over to her side of the screen and she was like facing the ceiling and just going around in circles and it was really funny. But yeah, they're, they're good games. They're fun to play with friends. I don't think I've ever played them solo. This is Lost Odyssey, which is a beautiful JRPG. The Xbox 360 isn't known for RPGs. There are a few of them on the console, but definitely wasn't a focus of, of the system and still isn't really with the Xbox One. But this was a great one. This was actually one of the last JRPGs I played for a very long time until I just recently started getting back into them a little bit. But it tells a great story about this group of people who are immortal and sort of what that means to them, how that affects them and their families, you know, being able to see the world progress or in some cases devolve over time and see what war does and how war changes things. And one of the best things was that as you go, you unlock these little stories, just like these beautiful little vignettes that sort of tell a story that might be related, might not be related to what you're doing at the time, but they're all really well written and really nice and yeah, very good role playing game if you are into them. And of course, one of my favorite series, it's Mass Effect. When I first heard that Bioware was doing another sci-fi RPG series, I knew I had to play it, and I became a fan very soon after it released. I played this a number of times over the years, always as female Shepard. Uh, once I tried to play as male Shepard, and I only lasted an hour or two before I abandoned that playthrough and uh, went back to Jennifer Hale. Uh, yeah, it's just such a good series. Again, Bioware just makes great characters that you want to spend more time with and spend more time with them. I did in Mass Effect 2. I got the collector's edition of this game. Uh, it comes with a few cool things. The steel case with Shepard and a collector. Of course, they always use the male Shepard for the art which bothered me a lot until the third game, I think. That's when they had the reversible cover. Um, it also comes with this little Cerberus package, which includes a couple things. There is a little comic book, Mass Effect Redemption, and see, comics. And then there is a tiny little art book, which is neat. I have the art book for Mass Effect 1 as well, like the full size one, but nice things to have for a fan. Uh, Mass Effect 2 is my favorite from the series just because it just doubles down on that focus on character. It's basically a whole game of character missions. Just getting everyone happy and doing sort of getting their un unfinished biz business finished so that they can go off to fight what could be their final fight. Um, although I have to say that in all the times I played Mass Effect 2, I never once lost a character in the end. 
whether that's because I'm awesome or just because I'm thorough, I'm not sure, but I always kind of, I'm kind of jealous when people talk about losing a character and like going through it emotionally just because I never really experienced that. So yeah, so now of course there's Mass Effect 3 which I also love. I got the collector's edition of this as well. I know a lot of people had problems with the ending of 3. I honestly never did. I found the endings were fine. I guess maybe my expectations were a little bit lower, but I wasn't expecting every single choice I made to make a difference in the end, given the scale of the fight your characters were in. Uh, so yes. Steelbook, finally they put the female Shepard on the actual game case. Also, Dude Shep here. What's in here? Yeah, just the game discs and a bunch of extra codes for things. And then in here, there's some extra little goodies. I think just like the second one, there is an art book and a comic. Yes, the art of Mass Effect 3. Uh, yeah, this was such, I don't know, I loved this game, especially at the end when you had to sort of say goodbye to your entire crew. That was, that was rough. There's a little postcard of the Normandy, a comic, and oh, I forgot about this. There's an N7 patch, a little Velcro one. I should probably use this for something. But yes, I'm happy to have these. I'd actually, if there is a collector's edition of Mass Effect 1, which I'm not sure if there is. I'm sh well, there has to be. Um, I would really like to pick that up so I can sort of complete the collector's edition set. Omerita City of Gangsters is one I just picked up recently. If you go to EB Games, they always have some ridiculous deal, like seven Xbox 360 games for like $20 or something. So I have gotten a number of things that I haven't had a chance to play yet. This is basically sort of like SimCity, except with gangsters. So, you know, a little bit of strategizing and planning. Kind of reminds me of the Brenda Romero game that's coming out later this year that I talked about in my most anticipated game video. But yeah, this just looked cool, like something totally up my alley, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. This is Valve's orange box. It includes Half-Life 2, Episode 2. I've actually never played the Half-Life games. I started Half-Life 1 and I played it for a few hours and then I just sort of never went back to it. Um, it has Team Fortress 2, which I also have never played, but most importantly, it has Portal. Although I am mostly played Portal on PC, but yeah, Portal is a fantastic game. Very funny, sort of the perfect puzzle game if you ask me. And of course, I also have Portal 2, which is also a perfect puzzle game. Sort of just takes the stuff from the first one. Also has a great co-op mode if you want to play through with a friend. Probably one of the most enjoyable co-op experiences I've had. So I don't know if you know this about me, but I am a big fan of game shows. So occasionally, Will will pick up a game show video game for me. So got The Price is Right, Decades. I don't know, I can honestly play game show games by myself for quite a while. When I was a kid, I used to play Monopoly by myself on NES for hours on end. So I do it a little less now, but uh, The Price is Right is a fun game. This is Raiden 4, which is a shoot 'em up Honestly, all the Raiden games, kind of blend together for me, although this is probably the last one of the series I liked. They have Raiden 5, which I have on Xbox One, and it's just, um, they decided they wanted to put a lot of story in it and have characters just constantly like nattering in your ear and they just never stop talking. This one doesn't do this, thankfully. It's very arcadey, very simple. You're in a spaceship, you shoot other spaceships. It's a lot of fun but I, there's not a whole lot to differentiate it from other games of the series. And this is Raiden Fighters Aces, which again, have a hard time telling them apart sometimes, but it is a decent shoot 'em up. 
This is Rayman Origins, which is great. I love the Rayman series. I think they're some of the best 2D platformers out there. Um, I don't really like the 3D Rayman, but we're not gonna talk about those. Uh, they're just good. They're so colorful. The music is good. They're so much fun. They do get quite challenging sort of near the end of the games, but they're just, um, just like really, joyous and I love playing them. So Rayman Origins is actually included, all the levels from it are included in Rayman Legends, which is available on pretty much every console now. So if you wanted to play this one, you could just get Legends and have access to all of these levels as well. But I just wanted this in the collection because I just love Rayman so much. This is Resident Evil 5 and Will and I got this just because it has couch co-op so we could play together. But honestly, we played about 10 minutes and we gave up. The weird tank controls are unappealing to me and the camera angles and everything. I'm honestly not the biggest Resident Evil fan. I played the original like way back on the PS1 and I really liked 4, but that's most of my experience with the series. So five didn't really hold any nostalgia or anything for me. It was just an oddly controlled game. Another series that I have really come to love is Saints Row. And the first game I played in it was Saints Row the third. I don't know what it is about these games. They take the Grand Theft Auto open world causing havoc doing crime formula and make it something I actually want to play. Um, I just really love the characters in this. I love how silly it is. All the little mini games that you can do are just very quick and snappy and a lot of fun and it's easy to go sort of from one to another and never get bored. It's fun to just grab a rocket launcher and cause as much damage as you physically can or play some weird game show um, <laughs> in front of a live studio audience. And yeah, there's just great, great set pieces, great use of music. And then after I played Saints Row the Third, I also played Saints Row 4, and this just ramps everything up to 11, takes all of that and basically gives you superpowers. You can leap over tall buildings. You can make lightning or fire fly from your fingertips. And the set pieces and the music are all just even better. You start out the game and you're climbing a rocket with a nuclear bomb on it, trying to dismantle it while Aerosmiths don't want to miss a thing plays, and all of your colleagues are saying goodbye to you. And it's just hilarious. They even like have a go at Mass Effect a little bit. I do also have Saints Row 1 and 2, but I have not played these yet. From what I've heard, they're I mean, some people like these more because they're a little bit more serious, but I would like to give them a try at some point. So just like I like game shows, I also love trivia. So I have enjoyed the Seen It games quite a bit. I have played these both with friends and just by myself, just because I like answering movie trivia. They are a good time if you are a trivia buff or if you have friends and want to compete with them. So this is Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. I really like the Frogwares Sherlock Holmes games, although honestly, this is probably my least favorite of the ones I've played. I'm actually kind of surprised that this is the only one I have on 360. I don't recall if I played the other ones on Xbox One or if I just don't have the games anymore or if they were digital. Crimes and Punishments is my favorite one because it takes um, multiple smaller cases for you to solve, whereas Jack the Ripper is all one big case and I just find it gets a little, um, a little tiresome by the end, but I do like the, dedu the deduction board in this game and sort of how you solve the mysteries. It's, uh, they're very good. If you like Sherlock Holmes, I recommend the Frogwares games, although I would go with Crime and Punishments uh, rather than this one. This is Spec Ops The Line, which is your basic war shooter, except this one has a conscience. Um, it sort of puts you in situations that become very uncomfortable and sort of does a little more of questioning of the ethics of war than, you know, your Call of Duty or games like that would. I thought it was overall pretty good. Like, I would rather play this one than a Call of Duty or something else like that. 
Star Ocean, The Last Hope. Completely forgettable. I could not tell you anything about this game. I played it, I finished it, but yeah, the Star Ocean series sort of peaked with Star Ocean Second Story and everything after that I found to be disappointing. So yeah, I found this had sort of generic characters, generic story. Uh, I don't remember anything about it. This is Star Wars The Force Unleashed. And I know I said a little while ago in another video that KOTOR was the last good Star Wars game, but this was actually not too bad. It did make you feel like a Jedi at times. It had good combat. I actually prefer the combat in this game to Fallen Order because I think there was less parrying in it. Funny story though, this is also the game I have gotten most mad at in my entire life, or at least the single player game I have gotten most mad at. Uh, there's a part near the end of the game where you have to pull down a Star Destroyer, and the game was bugging or it was freezing, but it was not obvious that it was bugged or freezing. Um, the music kept playing, the sound effects kept going, like they weren't looping any funny way or anything, but it just kept like, it would just stop working and I couldn't pull this Star Destroyer down. And I tried it over and over and over and it just wouldn't work. And I wanted to take the disc out of the system and smash it into a thousand pieces with a hammer. I was so upset, uh, but eventually, I got the game working and um, I, I spent a lot of time on the internet trying to find out what the hell went wrong, but eventually I got it working and I beat the game. That sort of put a damper on my experience with it, but up until that point, it was all right. So I haven't played this yet, but this is Tornado Outbreak, which my friend Musty Hobbit was talking about uh, last year sometime, so it got me interested in it. It sounds sort of like a Katamari Damacy thing. Uh, you play a tornado and the more things you destroy and pick up, the bigger you get, the more destruction you can cause. Uh, haven't had a chance to play it yet, but hopefully soon. And the game that made me cry probably more than any other game the Walking Dead by Telltale. I loved this game so much the first time I played it, and I continue to love it. I have played it, um, replayed it since. It's just such a great story between Lee and Clementine and sort of building this father-daughter relationship and raising Clementine so that she can take care of herself and survive during this zombie apocalypse. And it's just really nice. Um, I like all the characters. There's some very, very hard decisions to make in it. And this will pretty much always be my favorite of the Telltale games. This is The Witcher 2. It is the Enhanced Edition. Uh, Witcher is a game, and Witcher 2 are games that I played on PC, but I picked this up a few years ago at a swap because um, I kind of wanted to replay it on console. I haven't actually gotten around to doing that yet, but it comes with a quest handbook, which I found out is actually basically just a walkthrough of the entire game, which is kind of cool. really liked Witcher 2 because it sort of streamlined it a bit from Witcher 1. I loved Witcher 1, although it's been a number of years since I played it, so how well it stands up to time, I'm not exactly sure. I've heard it's a little bit hard to get into now, but um, it sort of streamlined it a little bit. I can see why it's playable on console, where as one I would not want to play anywhere but a PC. Also got a branching path at one point, so the second half of the game, or like the last third of the game, will be completely different depending on which route you go down. And since I've only played it once, I kind of want to go and see what the other path uh, does differently and where it leads. I think I've been calling a lot of things my favorite, but these are actually, in my opinion, some of the best games of all time. They were, I think, number two, number three on my top 100 list. It's XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and Enemy Within. I have spent so much time with these. I love them. They are my ideal 
turn-based strategy game, lots of resource management, lots of planning, lots of training up soldiers in addition to the tactical combat. Um, I just love the scripted missions and all of the upgrades that you can get, the new weapons you can research, the new armor, finding alien species, um, different ones popping up as you sort of progress through the game. These are just so much fun. I've actually been playing a lot of XCOM 2. I've played it probably yearly, but I think maybe this year rather than play XCOM 2 again, I might go back and play this one because it's just been a while since I've played it and I love it so much. Um, if you're at all a fan of strategy, definitely recommend the XCOM games, both these ones and XCOM 2. This is my desert island game. If I could only play one game for the rest of my life, this would be it. So yeah, that is the end of the games that I wanted to talk about. So now I feel like I've been talking for hours, but I'm going to just very quickly go over the rest of the games, which I have not played or don't have as much to say about. So this is where the Xbox 360 games live. Up here is the ones I've already talked about and down here is everything else. Hello, we're just gonna go through the rest of the 360 games that I don't have all that much to say about. Hopefully it will be quick. Going alphabetically as usual, first we will start out with 50 Cent Blood on the Sand, which from what Wills tells me is actually a pretty fun game. It's just your basic action shooter. Also got Afro Samurai, which I don't know anything about. Anarchy Reigns. Asterix at the Olympic Games. Now, this one is a rare game. Uh, there's not too many rarities in the 360 library at this time, but we got this for really cheap at a thrift store. Um, mostly, again, just picked it up because of the rarity, not because we wanted to play it. Binary Domain. Blades of Time. Where am I? There we go. <laughs> Blur is a racing game. We have a lot of racing games, or should I say Will has a lot of racing games. A bunch of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty Ghosts, Call of Duty 3, and Call of Duty 2. Call of Juarez and Call of Juarez the Cartel. Sort of Western shooters. The Capcom Digital Collection uh, has Street Fighter and some shoot 'em ups and things in here. Captain America Super Soldier. Carrier Command Gaia Mission. I have never heard of this before. I have no idea what this is. Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena. This is another one that I've heard nothing but good things about. Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. I think this was just free on Xbox Games with Gold. I played through a little bit of it, but it's just not my thing. It's more of a 2D beat-em-up than um, a usual sort of 2D Castlevania platformer that I would prefer to play. This is The Club. I think it's another driving game, maybe? Condemned 2, Bloodshot. Crisis 3. Dark Sector. So these are two games that I actually do want to play. The Darkness, I have heard good things about this. I just haven't got around to playing it. And we also have the sequel. Darksiders 2. Dead to Rights Retribution. You get to play with a dog in this game and the dog helps you kill people. Devil May Cry HD Collection. I think I've played a Devil May Cry game at some point at a friend's house, but I'm not sure which one it was. These are two DJ Hero games. I have never played a DJ Hero. 
Doom 3 BFG edition, and this is kind of interesting because it's branded as both a 360 game and an Xbox One game. The disc will work in both, which just sounds like a backwards compatible game to me, but for some reason they decided to make it for both systems right on the box. This is Dragon's Dogma. I picked this up, I think, last year at Retro World Expo, maybe the year before. Uh, a lot of people whose opinions about games I trust have said very good things about this, uh, so that's why I picked it up. I just haven't played it yet. Duke Nukem Forever. We'll probably never play this one. It's a couple Dynasty Warriors Gundam games, which I think are mech games. Family Guy, back to the multiverse. I have actually played a little bit of this. It's basically an episode of Family Guy that you control. Fast and Furious Showdown. Couple Fight Night games. I think these are boxing games. Fist of the North Star. This is a fighting game which is still sealed. Fuse. Gears of War 2 and Gears of War 3. I would actually like to play the Gears of War series at some point. I played a little bit of one of them co-op with Will before, but they remastered Gears of War 1, and I would like to try that sometime. There's just so many games. Golden Axe Beast Rider. A whole bunch of Guitar Hero games. Uh, Guitar Hero is a series that I played on PS2. I haven't personally really played any of them on the 360. Hitman Absolution. Import Tuner Challenge, another racing game. The Incredible Hulk. We've actually got a lot of sort of superhero comic book based games in version, which is apparently a game where you go upside down. Iron Man. Lara Croft, Tomb Raider Legends. I haven't played much Tomb Raider. As much of a fan as I am of the new ones, uh, I haven't played any of the sort of 360 era uh, Tomb Raider games. I just picked this up because I wanted to play it. Oh, a second copy of Left 4 Dead. This is The Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon. This is another fairly rare one. Max Payne 3. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This is like a hack and slash game, and we have the steel case for it. Men in Black, Alien Crisis. Midnight Club, Los Angeles. More racing games. With the Lancer Evo on the front. We have one of those. And then a bunch of Need for Speed games. Hot Pursuit. Undercover. Most Wanted. The Run. And Carbon. Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden 3. Auto Medius Excellent. I kind of feel like I've played this game, but I don't really remember anything about it. I think it's like a multiplayer shooter. Mostly I just remember this girl boob on the cover. The Outfit. Project Sylphid Arc of Deception. Project Gotham Racing 4. Prototype. And Prototype 2. Um, I think I've played Prototype. I don't think I got very far in it, and I don't remember all that much about it. Rage Anarchy Edition. Rapala Fishing Frenzy. Look at that big mouth bass. More racing, Ridge Racer. And another Ridge Racer. And then a bunch of rock band games. 
Rock Band was sort of the party game of choice for me and my group of friends about a decade ago. We used to play a ton of this. I used to do a lot of singing. This is kind of cool because it is a pack-in. It's still sealed. It's not for individual sale. It's got Sega Tennis Superstars and then an Xbox Live Arcade kind of compilation disc. Simpsons game. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection has a bunch of games like Altered Beast and Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Splatterhouse. Super Street Fighter 4. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. Seven Transformers games. Transformers the game. Oh, this is Terminator, not Transformers. I can't read. Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark. Transformers Dark Side of the Moon. Or Dark of the Moon, it's not a Pink Floyd album. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Fall of Cybertron. I think I've actually played this one. Is this one on Xbox One? If so, I have played this. Um, and War for Cybertron. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Universe at War Earth Assault, another one I'm not entirely familiar with. Vanquish. Wet. I always like this cover, this girl on the cover, but I don't know much about this game. X-Men, the official game, and X-Men Origins Wolverine. And that is finally it for the 360 games. Okay, that's finally it. That's all the Xbox games. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, I'm sure this was a long one. I'll find out how long when I actually do the editing. But leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite 360 games are or your favorite original Xbox games. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.